Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at how you can use the KNS81 RNAV computer for navigational purposes. For those of you who are not sure what an RNAV system is, um, many of you think it's a GPS, but believe it or not, in the days before GPS, you actually had the ability to use VOR stations for the purposes of finding any point in space and using them as navigational references, assuming you had the right equipment on board. Of course, our aircraft today is the lovely Beechcraft Duke. Uh, this is the one that just came out. You can grab it over at Just Flight for those of you who are interested in it. So popping on in here, uh, we have a very, very conventional avionic layout. You'll notice we have no GPS receiver anywhere that you can see here. And the purpose of that, of course, is to demonstrate how this particular unit works. The super duper short version, of course, is that you're going to select a VOR and then you're going to offset the position of that VOR based on where you want to go ahead and achieve your navigational goal. So if I were to open up a quick little chart here, uh, we have a lovely Connecticut, so we're down here at Hartford Brainerd. We have a VOR station here, and unfortunately, um, let's say we want to go ahead and I'll use the VOR station to very, very precisely line up for this particular runway over here at Ellington, or perhaps we wanted to do it down here in Meriden, which would be a little more appropriate for us. The thing you have to know is, of course, the VOR station here in Hartford doesn't line up with the one in Har uh, Meriden, so we, of course, cannot use that directly if we were to do conventional. Uh, some of you immediately say, well, you could just probably just sit here and uh, right-click on this one, and then, of course, you could uh, say Hartford, and you could right-click on this one, and then, of course, you would know that you can go at a 251, uh, 251 radial down here in Meriden. That's great, but what it doesn't do is this doesn't line us up for the runway unless we have some kind of GPS. What we really need the GPS to be able to do, or the system, the navigational computer to do, is to put us on something that looks a little bit more like this. We want to be able to approach Meriden coming here at the 170 and not at this goofy radial here. But how do you do that? That is where our RNAV computer comes in. What the RNAV computer will actually do is it will electrically offset the position of this and feed us navigational information to enable us to do an approach that looks like that. So how do we do all this? Well, fortunately, it's relatively easy for us. To do that, you're simply going to pick a VOR station, and then, of course, you're going to go ahead and identify where you want to offset the VOR to. In this case, we're going to offset it to Meriden. Now, you're sitting here going, um, could we just use that number you did like a half a second ago, like when you went into here and you did one of these things and you read this little radial here? It's, oh, sorry, that's HFD. We don't want that. We want actual HFD. We want the uh, VOR station here. Let me go right-click on that one more time. Oh, we'll go ahead and pop that in there. That's much better. So uh, blah, blah, KHFD, KHFD, HFD. That way it's a little bit more behaving. There we go. So you're probably looking at this little radial here saying, ah, 251 at 15 nautical miles. That's pretty good. But the good news is there's actually tools out there that can make this a little bit easier for you. Well, again, if you're using Sky Vector for this, you can actually open this up and read off the specific positions with their radials and their ranges. That's good news for us because when we get into the computer, we're going to have to go ahead and program that information in before we can start getting fancy. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and get a couple things all sort of set up here. Uh, we're going to run off some uh, electrical power on the ground here. I'm not going to be sitting here battling with everything else. So I'm going to click external power. They're going to go ahead and plug that sucker in. I need none of my electrical components. I'm going to come over here and hit the master avionics. I'm also going to pop on the main inverter. So this is the unit itself. And uh, when people look at this, uh, they start getting a little bit panicky, uh, but you don't need to worry about it. It's actually really easy. The first thing you're going to want to observe is on the left side, you have all the different modes on it. And uh, to change the mode, you're going to grab the big knob right here and just crank it, uh, which you'll notice here is we have RNAV approach, RNAV, we have our VOR mode, and of course we have PAR mode if you require it too, if you're doing precision approaches. The key thing here is RNAV approach increases sensitivity, RNAV is just kind of conventional. The next thing you're going to observe is we have a waypoint number sitting down here at the bottom. The waypoint is referring to what specific waypoint. We can stir several of these. You can actually adjust it. You'll notice here we go up to waypoint 9. If we go past 9, you can go up to 10 and it starts back over. That's as many of these fancy waypoints you are you allowed to have. Again, if you have a co-pilot, this makes this stuff real easy. So one of the things you observe is when I switch to a different waypoint, it flashes. And the reason it's flashing right now is it's notifying you that you're not actually selected this particular waypoint. As a matter of fact, if I press the RTN button, and you'll notice it goes back to the currently selected waypoint. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and dial in some of that data using what we had on that other page. Uh, when I pull this back down here, I can see uh, Madison is a, uh, we can see 110.40345.13.2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and find myself a blank waypoint. I'm going to go ahead and grab this up to a waypoint three. And you'll notice these little kind of dashy things here, greater than, less than sort of a piece. This allows me to select and input the data. So in this case, the first thing we're going to do is put in our frequency. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come to data adjust. I'm just going to crank this until I get to 110.40. I'm going to press the data key to go to the next option. This is the radial. We're just going to read it right off. And it says 345 degrees. Just dial down to 345. Looks pretty groovy. I'm going to press the data key one more time. And it's going to give us distance. Uh, this is where everybody panics. And remember, the range is 13.2. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. 
don't panic. If you need to enter any small decimals, click to pop this out to go ahead and dial it. Make sure you push it back in. So let's see here. Let's go double check to make sure our work is correct here. 110.4, 345, 13.2. 110.4, 345, 13.2. Fantastic. So what I'm going to do now is this has been programmed as waypoint three. Now, if I actually want to use this waypoint for the purposes of navigation, I have to click on the use button. When I do this, I'm basically telling the computer, hey, I would like to use this as my particular point in space for the purposes of actually flying around. Now, one of the greatest things about this is this is now stored in the memory of this airplane. If I exit properly, it'll actually hang on to that particular memory item so I can use it for future flights. Now, there's a couple other things that you need to keep in mind when you're using RNAV. And again, this is depending on what version of the avionics you have, but this is pretty applicable. One thing you're going to need to keep in track is this lovely switch up here. This switch selects between navigational source one, this would be a typical VOR, which is going to be on our radio over here on the right, or RNAV mode. If you don't click it to RNAV, you will not get updates on our lovely little HSI. Now, if you're wondering why this needle is doing a little happy dance here, it's because we're on the ground and we can't electrically see the VOR signal. It's going to do a happy dance. Another thing you could do, of course, if you want to confirm it, is if you come over here and press the check button, it tends to panic on you if it can't find the actual electrical signal for the actual VOR itself. If we don't have a good signal, it kind of gets all panicky on you. The last thing you're going to notice is we have a DME tool here. And one of the things you notice, which is really convenient, is if I set this to RNAV as my selection, it'll tell me from that particular airport, Meriden Airport, I'm 999 miles, and this is going to take me forever to get there. And again, the reason it's doing this is because we don't have a signal from that VOR yet. Uh, we have to basically get going for that particular purpose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get us over the runway and then we're going to use a little bit of navigation using it. All right, let's review our plan. So what we're going to do is we're going to take off from Brainerd. We're going to head on a 253 regular heading. Uh, once we cross over this particular point, remember, we've basically electrically taken this VOR and we've moved it to Meriden. We're going to grab the 168 radial to take us down to the runway. Now in the sim, to get that all set up, what I've done is I've selected my RNAV mode, I've made sure that I'm using my waypoint number three. I've also double checked to make sure I'm on have over here so we can confirm it once we get airborne. And I've set my heading bug for the purposes of that initial heading that we're gonna be traveling. Last little details I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna double check to make sure everything else is looking pretty good. Get some heat going on, it's a little cold in here. And I'm gonna go ahead and check my cabin altitude. That looks pretty good to me. 2500 will be our cruise altitude today. It looks pretty set. So let's go ahead and get in the air and uh, start flying this flight here. Here we go. Wow, this thing's got some pickup. This is definitely a not messing around airplane. Very nice. We're just going to proceed up a little bit, get a little tiny bit of altitude. We'll go ahead and do a very naughty maneuver. We're going to go ahead and take my right turn right away. We're going to pretend that we own the sky kind of a thing. And we're just going to cruise right over there to the right up my cow flaps a little tiny bit as we enjoy my nice gentle turn here and i'm gonna go ahead and swing us back this way so let's go ahead and pause right here all right a lot of things are happening actually what i can do now is i can actually reduce my power just a little bit because it is technically still running in the air right now one of the things you'll notice now is i now have an rnav readout you'll notice that i've got 15.1 nautical miles to get to my destination this is my speed and this is my time the other thing you'll observe is if i come down here and press the check button you can actually read out the exact information from the actual vor next we notice that this needle has finally come alive here and is starting to do its little happy dance like a real vor as you can click it with your finger if you need to and lastly, of course, you can see we're still in the RNAV mode. So I'm going to go ahead and unpause here. Go ahead and enjoy my nice gentle climb out. Again, we're doing this basically on our initial heading here. We're not doing anything too, too excessive. I'm going to go ahead and double check to make sure my pitch knob is centered. I'm going to activate my automatic pilot. I'm going to go to navigate. Whoa, no navigational hold. That would have been bad. We will go ahead and press heading hold, though. And we're going to let the aircraft go ahead and kind of start sneaking its way towards our target here. I'm going to push the nose down just a tiny bit here. There we go. We just got a warning. We have less than a thousand feet to get to our particular altitude. Good time, of course, to run around, check to make sure everything else is good. Cylinder six, what are you doing? Three, four, two, yeah, we got plenty. <laughs> plenty of overhead. Let's use it warming up in the cabin. 62 is enough. Whoa, got some really, really good uh, classic Connecticut turbulence going on this morning, which is always going to happen. There we go. Enjoy the nice little bounces. I say enjoy the bounces, folks. Enjoy the bounces. So a bunch of things I know that the system is working. Uh, first of all, I noticed that it makes sense. If you remember from our image earlier, we're traveling west to basically grab onto that VOR to bring us down to the ground. I'm just going to kind of basically say, leave me alone. <laughs> Next thing I observe is actually we can go ahead and set some cruise power here. There we go. 
that'll be perfectly acceptable for us. Anything in the green is considered okay. Delightful. Let's go ahead and close up the cow flaps. Check our temps. 368 is fine. It's under 390. We're good to go. All right. So now we're going to be cruising here. I can see we're about 12 nautical miles away from Meriden itself. Remember, the computer is constantly calculating this position. By computer, this guy. Uh, the other thing we notice is that we're approaching it at about 140 knots, which makes sense, because if you think about it another way, you can see right now that we're about at an oblique. We're basically perpendicular to our desired course as we're starting to approach it. Now, one of the things that gets really interesting here is if you look super duper carefully out that left wing, you can actually see where Meriden Airport is. Keep in mind, none of this navigational technology or equipment is going to work if we don't have a good VOR signal, which makes this stuff vastly more effective once you have a little bit of altitude underneath you. So I'm taking a look here. I can see very clearly that this is starting to choo-choo over to the side just a little bit. Again, remember, this is going to be that little position we got. Check my numbers one last time. 168. It looks good. Turbulence is wicked bad here. Temperatures look pretty good. Power looks good. We could lean the mixture and everything if we wanted to. Not really critical for this particular flight. We could, of course, be fits in with the weather radar and doing all those other things. But those are for other videos because there's so much to do with this airplane, which is what I love about it. Now, one of the interesting things here, and uh, this is a really, really big point, is the RNAV only can be tracked with the automatic pilot if you have no GPS. If you have any form of GPS on board your aircraft, you will not have the ability to track it. So let's fast forward to where that needle starts moving. There we go. We can see it's starting to do its little happy trance back towards the middle here. That's exactly what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and switch on navigational hold mode. And what the aircraft is going to do in a moment is it's going to execute the world's lamest left turn. As a matter of fact, I'm going to kind of give it a little bit of a hand here. You can see that heading mode is currently selected. Navigation is armed. And the reason navigation didn't click on is because of the fact that we're basically a not we haven't captured it, if that makes sense. We have to grab it for navigational mode to kind of kick in here. So looking down there, looking pretty good to me. I'm just going to finish up the turn myself. Just, like I said, give it a little bit of a nudge here. Now, remember, this signal is coming from a VOR that is being interpolated by our computer to tell us where we need to go for the purposes of aligning with it. And you can see here that it's just starting to basically center up. We're going to be able to capture it in a few moments. And now, the most fascinating thing I think you'll find, I haven't looked at that in a while, we're good. One of the most fascinating things I think you'll find here is this is now going to guide us right down to the airport. As a matter of fact, again, if I look off my nose there, there's our target airport about eight nautical miles away, just to give you an idea of how pretty accurate this system is. Now, one of the things you got to remember about remote navigation in general is it is remote navigation. It definitely is going to be limited by how far you are. You're going to have atmospheric phenomena. You're going to have signals that don't quite mesh right. There's so many different things that are going to be interfering with the accuracy of the system. That being said, you will be pleasantly surprised just how close you can actually get to hitting the specific target that you desire to do. Now, one of the things I learned from flying in the real world is when you do track VORs or anything that's going to be kind of based off the ground, it really works best if you go ahead and set it up in such a way where you're going to be using the heading bug to basically control it. Otherwise, the inaccuracy in this needle is going to make you slightly insane. And believe me, it certainly will. But now if I look right below me, do you see it? There it is. Meriden. And one of the most fascinating things, if you come over here, look at this. 2.8 nautical miles. Enjoy. <laughs>